stop thinking that your spouse is going to complete you. <laughs> That's what we're talking about today because it's a big thing, right? I think like a lot of people go into marriage with that expectation and then disappointment sets in. So we're going to talk about that today. Yep. So there's a lot of different ways that we expect that our spouse and our kids are going to fix us or make us complete or whatever you want to call it. And so we're going to talk about some of that today. Um, we're going to talk about struggles with self-worth that you think they're going to fix or um, maybe hurts from your past or holes left from relationships of your past and growing up. Um, sin struggles you had before we get married, you know, that they're still there. and then. Um, what our expectations are based on what we've seen, whether it's our own parents, our books we've read, movies, social media, all of that stuff that we let go into our brains and give us expectations. Right, because what do we do? We watch the romantic comedies, the rom-coms, or the, you know, we <laughs> we watch as they like, they wake up next to each other and she opens her eyes and he's watching her and saying like, I just love watching you when you're sleeping. And it's like, like, that's creepy. But you know, we think all this stuff's going on and it's totally ruining our perspective. Just, you know. Right. So I'm a guy. So I'm going to talk about the guy's side a little bit here for a minute. Um, and really men's biggest fear in life is kind of failure or John Eldridge would say it's not having what it takes. So we want our wives to take care of that for us. We want them to make us validated like we're the man and now we feel it because we're married. And so that should make us feel manly. But that's not what she's for. Like she's not wired to fill that need for us. And so most of the time they don't even know that that question is going on and that we're looking to them for that. And so they can't really take care of something that they're not even aware of or know how to take care of. So when we take those questions of our fears and our self-confidence and our lack of validation as a man to them, it's going to fall short pretty much every time. So that's just not going to help. It's, all our desires and struggles aren't going to be solved by her. So. Well, and like he said, like, I don't know that he needs that validation, right? We think like, oh, they're they're confident, like they don't need me to tell them like good job or that was you're awesome or you know like you're so manly, like we don't know that. And so, you know, it can it can be that um unmet need that we don't even realize is there too. True. So I guess really what we need to do as men is like find that within ourselves and with God so that we don't have to put that on them and make them try to fill that need. Mm -hmm. so. And as far as the women go, I mean, I'm, I can only speak for myself, I guess, but I kind of feel like across the board that women, I feel like women come into the relationship with more of that expectation. Like this is going to complete me. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I did put, um, I did put that question on my Facebook post just today. I said, do, do you think women or men go into marriage thinking that it'll complete them more? And I, I think women, um, I feel like we struggle a lot with, um, the self-worth and, and our feeling like enough. And so we think that when we get into marriage, we're going to feel that security. We're going to feel that wholeness. We're going to feel completely loved and completely enough and completely everything. Right. And then we get super frustrated, frustrated when nothing is turning out exactly like we expected. Like, the hero and we put we put so much expectation on on the guy like you're gonna be my protector and provider and uh you know make me feel beautiful every day and shower me with this and all this stuff like it's not it's not what we expect and the guy's usually <laughs> pretty clueless like 
where like you should just know like how do you not know I told you like a couple of days ago you were pretty I mean <laughs> right? um but even with household stuff like we we feel like we uh the woman's like oh we're gonna be this team you know and then and then stuff comes up like okay the like the gender roles kind of type thing where the teamwork in the home isn't going like it is. And, and we just get frustrated. And then we're like, well, he, sh he saw the dishes there. Like he, he, you should have done those knowing that they need done and all that stuff. Right. And maybe it's just me, but we're not that smart. <laughs> like we don't, we don't look at it the same way. So. Well, sometimes it's just literally like they don't see it. They don't, they're not, not that you're not a, observant but usually you're not observant <laughs> and so that's just it's an issue but i mean i know for myself that i really felt like i felt that i had been searching like i was always searching for like validation validation that i'm pretty validation that someone would want me and validation like i'm enough and so i did i felt like marriage was, was going to just seal that you know seal that deal for me and validate that and so that does that put totally unfair expectations on him and i you know it's not like we voiced that to our our <laughs> our fiance is like so just so you know <laughs> before we get married like I expect that this is going to solve my whole life worth of worrying and self-worth issues. Okay. You know, we don't voice that to them. So they don't realize like their role is, is, um, Hey, you better come into the screen more for those of you watching YouTube. My uncle says, I don't give him enough room. So he need to, come, <laughs> he need to come in here. Okay. So, um, sorry, my alarms went off. So, um, Really, I liked this quote. I went to women's conference this weekend and the quote was expectation without communication results in frustration. And I love that because we have these expectations here, but we're not putting it out there um, in a loving way. Maybe we put it out there, but, it, you know, it's usually like snarky and yelling and sarcasm sometimes, but it's going to lead to frustration. So um, another aspect. OK, so then. So then we where our expectations aren't being met, we're frustrated, we're like totally lost and confused with our marriage but that we thought was going to be like the end all be all most wonderful thing. And I feel like no one prepares young couples for that. I mean, you can go to marriage counseling. I don't know. And we can talk about the two, but I feel like marriage counseling should be with somebody that is outside of the picture and that isn't close to you. We haven't talked about this, but I feel that way because I feel like you're going to be a little bit more open with them about things if you're not seeing with them all the time. But I'm saying everyone should know coming into a marriage that they are not going, you're going to be disappointed. Like just like you're, you're going to be disappointed if you're putting that much expectation. It's not going it. to be happily ever after, like all the fairy tales yeah. say. I mean, so it we, yeah. can be happy, yeah. but not that. No. It's not wow. going to be wonderful all the time. So, um, so you go into your first couple years of marriage and I feel like you're disillusioned by all the things and the social media and your expectations and all and and, and your best friend, like their marriage, they got married so close to when we got married and they seem like they're doing great, right? We do all that, all that jazz. So what do people do if, <laughs> if they've let's, been married a few years? Let's have kids. That'll take care of everything yes. like have a kid it'll solve our problems it'll draw us closer it'll, together it'll just be great it'll magically erase all those problems that we had with communication and expectations and it'll just will be a and whether you're like teamwork you know is balanced it'll take care of all that right so that whole dynamic is blown up like magnet magnified and blown up by a thousand and it is rough. It's like you're in the trenches of marriage and then you add ch like parenting on top of it. And that's a whole different perspective and a whole different world because then you're adding your examples of parenting from your own parents. Then you're adding <laughs> in-laws parenting perspectives and a whole nother family done it. And like, it's just crazy, right? So 
and there again, movies and all that thrown in there too, just for influencing you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then the, the patterns keep spiraling. I feel like with the frustration and disappointment and miscommunication and um, unmet, unmet expectations. And so in the time that you are raising your next generation, your next, uh, you know, you're building your legacy and, and your family. And it was rough for us, I feel. And we also worked opposite shifts because of uh, work schedules. So it's just like we were going through hard parts of life and we were kind of doing it separately because we wouldn't see each other a lot of the times. A lot like, of times we'd wave at each other on the highway. Yeah. As we're coming and so the then, street. you know, less communication and all these, all these things were like building and building and building. And, and then, then you throw in lack of sleep, kids crying, and you don't know why, all of those stressors on top of everything else. So so again, and continuing to want that marriage and want that spouse to, to be that, Fix fill all. that need and fill that void. So what's the reality? Reality is that nobody no, no one or thing on this earth is ever, ever going to fill that void for you and satisfy you and help you feel whole and help you feel complete. That can only be God. That can only be God in your life and a strong relationship with him. Uh, we were created for that desire. We were created for that completeness and that wholeness and that feeling, but it's with a relationship with God. And all of those questions of worth, and identity and everything of that nature can only be answered in him as well. Right. And if you think about when the first man and woman were created, they were in close communion with God. They walked with him in the garden and talked with him. And we still want that. That's in us that we want that, but it was broken. And so that's what we have to work to get back to. Right. So God alone can love us perfectly and unconditionally. And so we wanted to share a few verses that kind of just talk about that. So Psalm 145, 16 says, you open your hand, which is God. God opens his hands and satisfies the desires of every living thing. Psalm 107 verses eight and nine says, let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and for his wonders to the sons of men. For he has satisfied the thirsty soul and the hungry soul he has filled with what is good. And then 1 Timothy 6.6 6 says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. And it's just, it's that picture of, okay, yes, life is going to be like, you can find that contentment and that wholeness in God, but it's not like it's going to make all your troubles go away, but it's going to bring that contentment and that joy that like through it all it's fine. Like he's got you and you're, you're grounded in him because ultimately we need to stop looking, looking to our spouse to meet those needs for us and stop holding that responsibility over their head and being bitter about it when it doesn't turn out that way. Cause I feel, and I know <laughs> I had, I had a lot of bitterness and that doesn't sit well and that doesn't go well. And when you start having bitterness and anger and miscommunication, all those things, you're going to always be looking outside of the home then, whether that's in work relationships and you're spending more time with them. Like, you know, it just starts that trail of looking for elsewhere outside of your home. Um, but when you have that shift in perspective and expectations your relationship will definitely take on a new feel if you're not holding that over their heads. And yeah. And I think it's important to realize too, is no matter how many things you think you have fixed in your spouse, there's always going to be more and there's more things that they want to fix in you as well. So we need to kind of keep that perspective and know that we need to have grace for them because we expect grace from them. So it's like a two-way street. And I think she was talking about bitterness. And I think that when she was able to release some of that, 
it didn't just help our relationship. It helped with relationships outside too, like with other people. And I think I've done the same. I mean, I've held things against her that, you know, she may not even know because I'm a stuffer instead of a blurter. So, <laughs> but I'm the blurter. Once, once that stuff gets released, it just makes things better, yeah. like way better. So, so thanks for listening. Yes, thank you. Um, just a little perspective on that topic. And then if you guys would do us the favor of sharing this to somebody you think would like it, we would love to just keep growing our family of uh, followers and just, you know, click the share, follow and share, and we'll keep going with this. So see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.